In this video, I'm going to go over the product categories element and how to customize it and make it look best on your site. So first things first, I'm going to click add elements here. I'm going to search for product. Here's the product categories element. So I'm going to select it. I'm just going to hit apply for now. So you can see we have one product category in our store. The product category is wings. I can change the product style here. So if I want it to be overlay, you can see that now that wings is overlaying on top of the image. I can select vertical, push, a lot of different great options we can choose here. I'm going to select overlay here. We can change the layout style. Um, so slider is uh, just like the row, just like a row layout. So a bunch of things in a row. I said row like four times. We're going to edit that out at 55 seconds. So you can see the style. Uh, we can change the layout of the product categories right here. Uh, if we choose light, uh, now my brain just broke. We can change the layout of the product categories list right here. Uh, slider is selected by default. Uh, with slider, all the items appear in a row. Uh, four items in a row um, is typically the default. And then there'll be a left and right uh, navigation arrows if we have more than four items, which will allow the users to scroll through the items in one row. With full slider, you can see it's a pretty dramatic difference. It's just one big image, and we can page through them right here. It'll show one. And then the standard row, no sliders, no nothing fancy, just a grid of items. And uh, you can change how many your columns are here. So that's how many are in one row. So now there's six in one row. Default's four. That's a pretty happy medium. It's big enough, uh, shows enough on the page, but also catches the user's eye and lets them see the details of the image. We can change the width here. Uh, if we have, if we leave it at container, it will be as wide as the page content. And if it's full width, it will be as wide as the display that you're viewing it on. So if you have a really wide display, it'll go all the way to the edges of that display. So we generally recommend, unless there's any reason not to, to select the container width, just because it's more in line with the rest of the site content and it looks more orderly. Then we have the column spacing here. Uh, we go from big, uh, small to big, collapse being zero and uh, small too large being how big the distance is in between each of the items. So we're going to go with small. We already went over the columns count here. And then depth, as I increase the slider, you see there's a shadow behind this product. And if I increase the depth hover, you can see whenever I move my mouse cursor over the image, it lifts off the page. The shadow becomes a little bit bigger. It's a really good way to show that this is an element that can be clicked and this is an element that should be interacted with by the users of the site. Then we have some animation here. Um, uh, if you wanted it to animate in whenever the user scroll to it, or if it's uh, visible whenever the page loads, this is how you would do that. So we can have it fade in up here. Nice little animation. So if you wanted to add that touch, you can do that as well. Down here in the meta section, we could uh, choose all categories. We could choose only the categories we want to appear in this row. So I only have one category, so I'll select wings. We can order uh, by the name of the category, A to Z or Z to A, depending on how we want it. We could order it by the date, uh, depending on the date that the category was added, or we could order it by the menu order, the way that we want it, the way that it appears in our WooCommerce shop. So I'll select name. We can show count here. You can see whenever I hover over wings, it shows one product. If we don't want to show that count, we want to make it cleaner, I can disable that. And now whenever I hover over wings, nothing shows up. Change the width of the image here. So this changes the size of the image, if you so desire. We can change the radius of the image here. So as you can see, if I change it a little bit, get some nice rounded quarters. If I change it to 100, 100 it's a full circle. So I'll, I'll bring it back to zero. The image size here, this doesn't change the uh, size of the image on the page, it changes the size of the image that's loaded from the background. Um, what I mean by that is uh, smaller images, uh, for example, thumbnail, are very small in size, which means that it will take only a couple seconds for the website to load it in. However, if we select medium, it's really a good happy medium for stuff like this. It loads quicker and it allows, um, it allows the users to see the details of your image can select an image overlay here. So for example, if I want this overlay color, 
I can change this slider here to make it more or less transparent. Change a hover effect on the image if I want. So now whenever I hover, you can see that the image becomes blurred. can change the text position here. So if I want the text to appear in the middle, I can. And I also have it appear at the top. Usually for a category browser, I like it to be in the middle just because uh, we're browsing categories. There are not really any items. We're more interested in the name of the category. So I put it in the middle, not really too worried about what's behind it. Change the text to line. So if I want it to be left, right, or center, I can. I can also change the text size. I generally choose a pretty large size for categories just because, uh, once again, we're not really showing a lot of details about a product. We're just showing uh, the category that we can select into to see the products. Change a hover effect for the image uh, for the text here. So if I select slide in here, you can see now the text doesn't appear until I hover over it. So if that's something you wish to do, you can. You can see combined with that hover effect, the slide looks really good. So if that's what you would like to do, this looks like a very nice, complete element that even the most professional sites implement. And then I can change the background of the text here. So you can see now whenever I mess around with this, the background color of the text changes. And change the padding of the text here. So you can see as I drag this, the distance between where the edge of the text is and the edge of that box is changes. So generally we wanna do uniform texting uh, padding around, usually do about 20 pixels, you can see that looks pretty nice. I'm going to get rid of that padding, I'm going to get rid of that there. Then lastly here, we can do a class. So if you're familiar with CSS, you can add a custom class name here, and then you can target it in the custom CSS section of your website customizer. If you're not, that's no big deal, contact us, we'll get it working for you. And the last thing, we have the visibility. Uh, so if for some reason you don't want this to show up for users on different devices, or you only want it to show up for certain devices, you can do that right here as well. Just make sure that everybody on every size of device has the best uh, experience. So then once we're done, we have all the settings we want. We can hit apply, hit update. Then once we're all done, that means that the item is now live on your page. If you have any question about the product categories element, please let us know. We'll be happy to help you out. Thank you.